This is Daylight Magazine coming to you from Adventist World Radio Ghana, the voice of hope. Ghana, voice of hope. Today's Daylight Magazine has segments designed with you in mind. Stay tuned and be blessed. For our reflections, we shall look at Genesis chapter 50, verses 1 to 8. Joseph threw himself on his father and wept over him and kissed him. Then Joseph directed the physicians in his service to embalm his father Israel. So the physicians embalmed him, taking a full 40 days, for that was the time required for embalming. And the Egyptians mourned for him 70 days. When the days of mourning had passed, Joseph said to Pharaoh's court, If I have found favor in your eyes, speak to Pharaoh for me. Tell him, my father made me swear an oath and said, I am about to die. Bury me in the tomb I dug for myself in the land of Canaan. Now let me go up and bury my father. Then I will return. Pharaoh said, Go up and bury your father as he made you swear to do. So Joseph went up to bury his father. All Pharaoh's officials accompanied him, the dignitaries of his court and all the dignitaries of Egypt, besides all the members of Joseph's household and his brothers and those belonging to his father's household. Only their children and their flocks and herds were left in Goshen. You just listened to the audio version of Genesis chapter 50 verses 1 to 8. What do you choose? Eternal damnation in hellfire or eternal life in a golden city? Hell was not made for any man but the devil. Dear listener, don't allow him to deceive you to sin to join him in hell. Accept Jesus Christ today as your personal savior. Get baptized into a true Bible-believing church and live daily for the Lord with the help of the Holy Spirit. Your eternal life will be guaranteed. God bless you. Every time you will do it, no matter what you, huh? You are welcome back to You Decide, and I am Thomas Isaac, and with me here is Ni Aite Tego, Michael Akoba, and Pastor A.Y. Bryant Koka. We've been discussing true and false prophets, and today being a part two, the emphasis is on how to identify the false prophets. Michael, tell me one thing that can help us know that this person is a false prophet. From Micah chapter 3 verse number 9, mm-hmm. we are told their emphasis is on money and riches. Let's read it. Let me even add the verse 11. Hear this, you leaders of the house of Jacob, you rulers of the house of Israel, who despise justice and distort all that is right, who build Zion with bloodshed and Jerusalem with wickedness. Her leaders judge for bribe. Her priests 
teach for a price, and her prophet tell fortunes for money. money. Yet they lean up upon the Lord and say, Is not the Lord among us? No disaster will come upon us. Wow. So the false prophet is interested in money. preaching fortunes and money, and at the end of the day will tell you, it shall be well with you. Everything is okay with you. Everything is all right with you. Is that what you are It is not us? wrong to inspire hope in people. Good. What the test is saying is their main concentration, for instance, consultation and whatever, they will not present the statement as to how the people will be so remorseful that they will not pay, okay. but something which will be sounding so sweet in their hearing. Wow. So they will respond as such. But even offering hope, it's a method of relating God's message to his people. In itself, offering hope is a method of relating God's message to his people. Okay. Which I have okay. explained earlier. Yeah. yeah. Are you okay with that, Niaite? I can see you want to add a word. Yeah. When you read First John 4, from 5, it says, They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, mm. and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God hear it not us. You see, that is why I started by saying that serious believers of the Lord, true disciples of the Lord, mm. have no cause to worry about false prophets. Mm -hmm. Because when a true prophet speaks, mm. the world would not listen to him. When Micaiah spoke, even before Micaiah spoke to Ahab, Ahab's 400 prophets had already told Ahab he was going to win a battle. Mm -hmm. And Jehoshaphat says, uh, told him, is there not another prophet that we could ask from so we can be double sure? And then Ahab reluctantly tells him, there is this other prophet, but I hate him because he never says anything where, good. Where, where can we find this account? First Kings oh, 22, is, First King 22 19, that was right. First Kings 22, verse 19, right. that was. Okay, so right. go on. Mm -hmm. You know, he says, I hate him because he never says anything positive about me. Okay. If you bring him, he's going to tell you something bad. But they still brought him. They brought him, and when this guy told Ahab what the Lord was saying, he said, ah, didn't I tell you he wouldn't say anything good? Okay. Ahab had already made up his mind. He wanted the sweet things, and so he had his own prophet who tell him what he wanted to hear. And in fact... The person who was sent to go and call Micaiah mm -hmm. actually told him that, listen, all the prophets have told him good news that he's going to win the battle. So when you go, say the same. You get it. And this clearly agrees with what we are told in the New Testament, that, you know, they're going to heap unto themselves those who are going to tell them what they want to hear because they have itchy ears. Yes. Exactly. You know, and the same thing happened in the Old Testament. False prophets usually are attracted by those who want them okay a true prophet word will never be taken by those who are not in line with god wow yes in wow. fact when ahab came in touch with elijah he said you are the one who has been troubling israel, israel. this was how the man of god was seen by you know one who was not in the way of god okay Again, he met Elijah when God had sent him to come and tell him it was going to rain. He said, you, my enemy, you have found me. The real man of God, Ahab was seeing him as an enemy. You get it? The real prophet of God. And you know, when Jezebel killed the prophets, mm. Obadiah mm -hmm. hid hundred prophets. Mm. But Elijah, when he was complaining to God, or even before they went to have that contest whose God could bring down fire. Yeah. He told the people, listen, they've killed all of God's prophets, and I'm the only one left. <laughs> but meanwhile, Obadiah had hidden 100 prophets. Okay. I want you to know that the true prophets usually are in hiding. The prophets that are all over the place that the people hear of are usually the false prophets. Yeah, usually. They are usually the I'm false either. prophets. Pastor, you started to expound also on the money issue. I'm still not getting it. Is there anybody who prophesy hope, prosperity, as a false prophet? No, 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 no. But the fact is, it is talking about the motivation of the false prophet. Okay. Their motivation is what they would do. It's just like what some people do in the banks and whatever. You go there, they will pretend as though they are helping you because of the tip that they want to receive. So they will make things look as though they're working for you. You read in Jeremiah 6... 
13. It says, from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness. Mm. And from the prophet, even unto the priest, everyone dealeth falsely. So, woe to them that are ashamed when they have committed abomination. Mm -hmm. Nay, they were not all ashamed, neither could they even blush. Therefore, they shall fall among that fall. And at the same time, I will visit them and shall cast them out, said the Lord. Ezekiel twenty-two twenty-five. There is a conspiracy of a prophet in the midst thereof. Like a roaring lion, mm. ravening its prey, they have devout souls. Wow. They have taken the treasure and precious things. They have made her many widows in the midst thereof. So you see that they will skin you. They'll make sure this consultation, bring this money, bring that and that. You should heal. You should say good things. Because that is what God has given you a message. The prophet reproves. Mm -hmm. He rebukes. Mm -hmm. He counsels. He guides. But some of these people, they are only telling you bad news. Your mother knows about it. Your father knows about it. It's your uncle. It's your grandmother. They are always giving you bad news, and then they will give you the, the negativity, the, the negativity, and then later they will tell you Quite this is messages. This is what you need to do. Ezekiel twenty-two twenty says, and their prophets are dubbed them with untampered mortar, seeing vanity, and dividing lies unto them, saying, "Thus saith the Lord God, when the Lord hath not spoken." So they are also liars. They are liars. But, but how would I know a very unassuming and uh, an innocent Christian who is vulnerable to this? How can I know? But the fact is, you must know the word of God. Mm. You must know God's will. Mm. You must know God's purpose. If you don't know God's word, you will be deceived. If you don't know the word of God, I read this in Ezekiel 22, 20. It says, her priests have violated my law. And have profaned my holy things. Mm. They have put no difference between the holy and the profane. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and clean. And they have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths. And I am profane among them. So God is saying they profane my Sabbath. They profane my law. They don't even make a distinction between clean and unclean. Holy and unholy. And so you see. Anyone that is not bringing you to the things of God, the commandments of God, the laws of God, the Sabbath of God, the will of God, the purposes of God, the salvation of God. Anyone that is not bringing you to the things of God, that will put you in line with God because they do not expound and make exposition. What about the wealth of God, the riches of God, the prosperity of God? Because it looks as if... We are not saying that prosperity is bad. Mm -hmm. Go to Ecclesiastes. It says you should enjoy your riches. Mm. That is your portion under the sun. Mm. And so if God gives you riches, enjoy it. Okay. Are you getting it? And we are not saying that being prosperous means evil. Okay. The fact is you should be content with what you have what and with godliness. You want to get more. The fact is, we should be careful because the insatiable desire can lead to lust and can lead to evil. With well, reference to Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse number 11, it says, mm -hmm. Time is what the Lord gives to us all. Mm -hmm. And being human beings, the edge for more is within us. Okay. But with reference to the topic we are discussing, in the house of God, when a prophet is to tell people about what the people should do in regards to sin, you know, they don't talk about what the person has really done. Okay. But rather, this and this, that is the reason why you are poor. So come with money. So I do such for you in order to be redeemed. Such is not the message God delivered to his people. We don't have examples of such when God intended to declare his will to his people or to the prophet in order to be related to these people. We don't have reference in such. So do you want to tell me in simple words that there wasn't any prophet of God in the Bible who took money from people or who charged a fee before 
prophesying to them, counseling them, teaching them. Do you want Maybe to Maybe yet to be that, discovered. <laughs> Even that of uh, Elisha, when he healed Naaman, the Syrian general. The man brought money. He brought garments. He brought costly things. Elisha said, take it away. I'm not taking a penny, a kobo, a peswa. Take it away. And out of covetousness, Gehazi went to go after him for those things. Okay. And he had leprosy. So you see that Elisha says the example that freely you have received, freely really? give. Okay, Nia Yute, what's your take on this? I want to read Second Corinthians 11 verse um, 20. Okay. In fact, you even put up with anyone who enslave you hmm. or exploit you or take advantage of you or pushes himself forward or slap you in the face. This, you were asking about the characteristics of some of these false prophets. Yes. And the false prophets are like highlands. Okay. Highlands just take advantage. They don't sacrifice. Mm. If you recall, after the people had gone to the outskirts and it was getting dark, the disciples, their concern was for them to go and fend for themselves. Yes. But the true shepherd ensured that he fed them before he made them go. So somebody who has been hired doesn't care about the welfare. That is the false prophet for you. Okay. He cares only for himself. Okay. What he can get. get. Because in the first place, whatever he is telling you, he has not been instructed of God to tell you. They come with a motive to harm you. Wow. They never come with your interest at heart. Okay. You have to know that there is a spirit that they work with. Mm. Certainly, if you are a prophet, you are, you are aligning yourself to the spirit of God. And the contrary is you dealing with what? A spirit from the devil. We have to go on a break. I want to say a very big thank you to my panelists, me, Aite Tego, Michael Akobwa, and Pastor Koka. I have been your host, Thomas Isaac, and always remember, in matters of faith, you decide. It was the truth. It was nothing but the truth. Only truth comes from you. It was the truth. It was nothing but the truth, and it's all that you can do. Oh. For any inquiries or contribution, you can contact us on 233-2087-04532 or 244-235017 or email us at radio at vvu.edu.gh or through the postal address Adventist World Radio Ghana PO Box AF 595 Adenta Greater Accra Region Ghana We will expect your feedback. Welcome you to Adventist World Radio. This is Moment of Truth. And your speaker today is Pastor Dr. Tunde Ojewali. And the title of my discussion today is Faithful in Little Things. Faithful in Little Things. Let us pray. Father, open our eyes that we may see you in your beauty. And may we accept you all over again. In Jesus' name, amen. Open your Bibles with me to Luke chapter 16. The book of Luke chapter 16. And we'll very quickly look at verses 10 to 12. Luke chapter 16, verses 10 to 12. It reads, 
he who is faithful in the least is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? I have some questions for you as you are listening to me. Are you trustworthy? Can others count on you? Or do you want to know how to be original in a culture of copycats? Do you want to be a part of a vanishing breed in today's generation? If so, then become a person who is faithful. You know, a person who follows through with their promises. One whom others can count on, whether things are rough or smooth. One whose word is as good in the little stuff as well as in the mammoth gantrium task. He is a kind person whose promises to call and does so on time. He says he'll do it and he does exactly like he has said he will. You know, are you known to be a faithful person, I ask? If you are, then here are a few words that can be used to describe you. Trustworthy, dependable, reliable, and responsible. You know, all the names saturated with recurring theme of character. Character quietly yet convincingly says, You can count on me at my cost. And at any cost, and at all cost. Faithfulness. Strange, isn't it? That such a simple thing will be in such a short supply. Faithfulness. Today when everything we want, we want it now. You want your pictures developed in in minutes. Your food ready in seconds. Houses can be built in 60 days. It's the culture of I want what I want and I want it instantly. People go to school and they want to use shortcuts to finish quicker. We are accustomed to working and getting everything quick. No longer working patiently or waiting on anything. You know, there are many people who want to climb the ladder of success, but they want to jump from the bottom of that ladder and jump to the top of it without climbing. (laughs) I want you to know that being faithful in little things is a mark of of a Christian. They want you to be impressed with their talent and their skills of persuasion rather than with their faithfulness. If that describes you, stop where you are. It's time for you to change. So my question is, are you faithful in little things? Do you often seem to neglect little things? What are those little things in your area that you are no longer faithful? Maybe you are no longer faithful in the way you spend your money. No longer faithful. No longer faithful in giving money to help in the things of God. No longer faithful. No longer faithful in spending time with your God. No longer faithful. No longer faithful to your wife or to your husband, to your family. No longer faithful. Maybe no longer faithful to your boss. You are paid to sit at your table and get the job done. You are on the radio, on the phone, on the email, on the internet, doing your own thing. Can you be described as a faithful worker? Jesus says he who is faithful in another man's thing is the one that can expect to have his own. Work for the person you are working for right now as if you are working for God. And God will give you a righteous reward. Be careful, my brother. Be careful, my sister. Those little stuff may be the things that will bring you blessing. It was but a little thing when Abraham saw some strangers at the gate. And he said, oh, come on. Let me wash your feet. Let me give you a meal. He never knew he was entertaining angels. So when you are faithful in little things, you just never know, you never know. It might be angels. It might be somebody who will come around and bless you someday soon. Please be faithful. Be faithful. Be faithful in little things. One family was returning home after a very busy day. 
it was already dark. And as they were about to come in, they heard somebody screaming for help. Apparently, he was in trouble, maybe drowning. And everybody said, I'm tired, let's go in. Then, but the younger son said, let me go see who that is. By the time he got there, it was the oldest brother who was not home with him. He had arrived early and he wanted to take a swim in the river close by. And he was drowning and screaming. When they went to save somebody, they did not know it was their own blood relation. Their brother, their first child. So I want you to know, be faithful in little things and it will help you forever. And you will get a big reward when Jesus comes. To be faithful may not be easy for you. But I recommend to you, Jesus, his strength will make you faithful. Let me pray for you. Father in heaven, I commit my listeners unto you. Help them to be faithful even in little things. Faithful when nobody is watching them. Faithful when no one may even see around them to reward. Faithful knowing that whatever they do, they do unto God and not unto man. Give us a faithful reward, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much for staying with us. Once again, you can reach us on 233-2087-04532 or 0244-235-017 or email us at radio at vvu.edu.gh or through the postal address Adventist World Radio Ghana PO Box AF 595 Adenta Greater Accra Region, Ghana we will expect your feedback. A-W-R, Ghana, voice of hope. I believe today's magazine has been a blessing. May the good Lord's hand be in your life. Amen. Remember to tune in same time tomorrow. Bye for now. <laughs>